Well, welcome to the Lammas hearing. This is it. After four years, we've got a Welsh Assembly inspector who's going to make a decision. Quite nervous. First time I've worn a suit ever. <laughs> so here goes. Good luck. My name is Andrew Poulton. I'm an architect and I'm also the inspector appointed to determine the appeal by Lammas Low Impact Initiatives Limited. And this arises from the failure of Pembrokeshire County Council to determine within the due period an application for planning permission for nine eco small holdings, a community hub building, and a seasonal campsite on land at Ponto Dapa, which is near Glandor in Pembrokeshire. I think I'll, I'll take us to the mill pond first because it's a good kind of reference point to, uh, and then we'll kind of go out from there to the various quarters. Quite central to the yeah. yeah. I'm Larch Maxi, I'm part of the Lamas team um, and we've just broken from the first hour of the hearing and things seem to be going really well. I think um, Andrew Poulter, the in inspector, is being very fair. Um, it seems he's really up for everyone being able to speak. It's it's a hearing, not an in inquiry, so it's more in informal. And so far we've talked about um, the m m first objection that the council have to our plan. Paul introduced the project and our idea of living as, as a one planet project, fitting in with Wales's um, policy of a one planet nation by 2050 and showing that we can actually start doing that now and people can, we can use that to learn how it might spread out into other parts of society. And then the first objection from the council was that we, um, we've we asked for, that we'll show that we can, the project's viable, that we can meet 75% of our household needs within five years. And the policy says that it should be within three years unless you can show good reason why it shouldn't be. And we're saying we can show very good reason why it shouldn't be because it's based on permaculture. It takes a time to not only build your own house and set up your whole livelihood, but also to set get your, in, your, everything integrated um, and working together in a holistic way so the house is designed into the landscape and to your business plan and that everyone's business plans are working together. Plot five there um, through into the next field is plot six. The terrace is on the other side of those trees and you can just see the, the conifer. What's interesting is that there was an objection from someone in the audience um, saying that and this is certainly a strong feeling amongst some of the locals. They, they live there, they work the land, and they say this is a really hard environment. It's very wet, lots of rainfall, it's quite high up. You know, most small holdings, most farms struggle on 80 acres or more. How are you going to do it on 5 or 10 acres? And I really understand that, you know, but this is a different approach. It's permaculture based. And what's interesting is that the council haven't even objected on those terms. They now accept our figures that we are, we can be viable, we can produce 75% of our household needs from the land. We've just broken for lunch and after another hour of debate we have talked about several things. There has been um, a lot of discussion on the criteria to do with functional need. The County Council has um, said that uh, they need to see proof of how many adults we need to have on the land and we can't have too many. Um, Clearwater's report has very clearly stated through um, independent research that we need to have at least the number of adults on the land that are in the Lamas management plan. Um, the other issue that was raised was to do with the local community and integrating with the local community. And um, I have lived in this area for the last three years and I've lived in Glandour for two. And um, some of the local people feel that it's going to be an us and them situation and that we won't be talking to them and it will be um, very separatist. Um, I, having lived in, in the village, um, I've felt it um, 
very difficult to sometimes speak to local people because I know there is this difficulty um, and they feel very strongly against Lamas. I have run a business locally for quite a few years and my kids go to local schools and we are integrated in so many ways and we very much don't want it to be an us and them situation. We very, very much want to integrate with the local people. I'm Hoppy Wimbush and we've just broken for tea, um, ready for the last session, but the primary concern of local people was the traffic implications and there was a, a, a reassured response from Paul Wimbush saying that all the planning uh, authorities have agreed that the traffic considerations have been met and the points for the planning uh, application were primarily about the fact that the planet really needs this project to happen. Uh, we're at crisis point really economically and climatically and that low impact developments of this kind are absolutely essential um, and also that uh, low impact development historically has often uh, happened retrospectively where people have moved onto the land first of all and then applied for permission later and Lamas is different in that it's actually been instrumental in helping write the policy 52 in the first place and has worked consciously with planners in order to bring this planning permission uh, decision about. So my own personal feeling on what's happening here is that we're in a very, very strong position. Um, I feel that the inspector listened and took all the points on and really understood some very complex things which I felt deeply reassured by. And well, I guess we'll just see what happens. I have talked with a number of local people who are objecting to the project and approached them um, several times and the door has been firmly closed with good reason until a post-planning situation. And he says there's a kind of there's a vested interest in kind of forming a, 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 a cohesive opposition to the project. I, I would like to just welcome all the local people who are opposed to the project to just come and talk to us. You know, we're not monsters, we're real people. Most of the Lammas residents you, you haven't met, um, and just give us give us a chance. Give, you know, give and particularly the kids. You know, soon there's going to be kids in the village. Just give them give them a chance. Okay, so it's about twenty past five now. We've been here since four ten o'clock this morning long day for everybody and everyone's looking a bit tired. We've just been through the planning conditions, the conditions that determine exactly what we can and can't do once we're there and when our planning permission could be revoked. Um, I think it's gone pretty well really because what the planning inspector has done has withdrawn removed a lot of the conditions which were suggested by Pembrokeshire County Council and suggested that actually we don't really need them at all and actually it can also restore a lot of our permitted development rights which is the rights to do trivial little things which they were looking to restrict and I think it's brought it all back down to earth a little bit really and removed a lot of the debate that had been going on. Mike Phillipson, are you Julia's husband? It's been uh, a long day I'm pretty exhausted. I feel this gone pretty well. Uh, I hope we get it. I mean, who knows though? <laughs> who knows? It comes down to this one man, this, uh, Andy Poulter, the planning inspector, who will now go away and four weeks later we'll, we'll hear whether we've got it or not. And, yeah, here's hoping.